So the remainder of this session, about 35 minutes or so, what I want to demonstrate is um, use of generative AI to kind of help you learn. Because uh, um, uh, I guess I'll maybe start with uh, how um, uh, kind of counter demonstration or counter example of a demo where how you shouldn't use it first. And then, um, and yeah, and then we'll go from there. <laughs> so let me open up ChatGPT. So I switched my paid for account. I last semester I had a paid for account for perplexity, actually an entire last year, and I was using that to answer actually conceptual questions. And with the uh, uh, ChatGPT for all, you know, for Omni, um, I thought, hey, uh, let's try this out. Maybe they fixed some of the hallucination issues. So, um, so, so I'm going to be using ChatGPT more uh, this semester. Uh, my perplexity paid for account is expiring in a couple of weeks, and uh, I'll be just using this. I don't really want, these cost $20 a month, and I don't want to pay for two of those. I'm just going to pay for one of this, and then perplexity subscription, I'll let that expire. So um, one of the ways that you shouldn't use this is where you just uh, uh, ask for answers. So I can do this, and this has gotten a lot easier um, with the, the uh, generative AI being able to understand from screenshots. Uh, so if you do something like this, uh, it'll probably answer correctly. Uh, so let's uh, give this a try. What? That's on. That's incorrect. It can view images. Uh, am I not? That is uh, incorrect. Why is it saying that? Um, let me, um, I'm in the right engine, I think. Let me give this a try. Uh, can you see what's uh, in the screenshot? So I'm pretty sure you can, like that's just incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, using it like this, I don't think uh, um, you will really learn. So, if you are using generative AI to just to get the answers. So, you know, I, I um, gave it a question. And even if you don't um, put in a uh, request like this, it'll probably answer it. Um, so it analyzes the G option, so it has, uh, okay, not dimensionally consistent, second one, not dimensionally consistent, third one, dimensionally consistent, fourth one, you can see I'm not even reading the rest, <laughs> uh, dimensionally consistent, and dimensionally consistent. Now, if you are doing this, uh, I can tell you, one, this is academic dishonesty, and two, at the end, you won't really have learned anything. And I mean, if you don't believe me, just try it for a while, come back to this, see if you learned anything, and you will find that you didn't. Um, so, so even though ChatGPT is good enough these days to give correct information to a lot of these questions, I, um, I really don't recommend that you do that. Um, so like, you know, so the other question was multiple choice question. Like even this question, I'm pretty sure if I just gave it or maybe even be super lazy and just put it into screenshot, not even say anything, it'll probably just answer it on its own. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you actually have to give ChatGPT a little bit of help if you want it to actually teach you instead of um, giving you answers. Because if you did it like this, nothing stops you from doing this. And I, unless it got the answers wrong, I would suspect that, um, so if, so right now I'm not even thinking about physics. I don't know if it got this right. Okay, got this right. If you're doing this, I can guarantee you that you will learn nothing. So if you are using ChatGPT to learn, and you know, use it in a way that's academically honest, which is, you know, basically functionally equivalent to using ChatGPT to learn. Uh, you have to give it a um, bit of help. So, um, so I'm gonna start with this. Okay, um, thank you for that. 
but for the remainder of the questions for this uh, session please don't give me answers right away I'll uh, tell you what I have done so far and ask you for the next step so you have to tell ChatGPT to basically act like a good tutor a good tutor shouldn't give you answers right away so you have to and I'll get rid of well should I get rid of the memory you know I'll, I'll keep the memory for the future so in the future sessions um, ChatGPT will remember but I'll probably repeat the same future sessions again uh, I won't continue this thread forever because I've seen ChatGPT get a little bit baddy if I keep a thread for too long so um, so let me pick a new question and uh, and kind of work through that and, uh, and, you know, if you uh, are ever curious, um, you know, how my approach differs from how ChatGPT does it, you can always um, go to the homework help videos. That's how I'm doing it. And I'm pretty sure I don't use ChatGPT in any of those videos. Uh, I might be using SageMath in some of them. Um, there's a... Uh, uh, there's a lecture video coming up either next week or the week after where well, I'll demonstrate use of SageMath um, for working through algebra. So let me look for a question that's relatively substantive. Um, oh, this is a fun question. So, so let me um, do this. Um, again, there's a video of me working this out from scratch, actually two different ways. <laughs> but uh, let me ask this of ChatGPT. So this is the question and let's hope it doesn't um, answer. So, and it should uh, ask me to show, show it what I've done so far, yeah. So let's start by finding a volume of the spherical ball since density defined, okay. What have you done so far? Yeah, so uh, I know the uh, formula for the volume of the sphere. Uh, v is equal to 4 thirds times pi times r squared. Um, sorry, r cubed. Um, if you don't know that off the top of your head, you might look it up. Um, that can be fun <laughs> or uh, instructive. Or you might ask ChatGPT, what is the formula for the volume of the sphere? Um, and let me see what it does. It might give me the answer for the volume. Let's see, next step should be calculate the radius. Okay, good. Radius will be half of that, okay. Um, so let me do that in a calculator. So let me use this chance to demonstrate Wolfram Alpha um, as calculator. And do I need to change units? I don't need to change units. So I'll keep the um, same unit throughout this uh, or I, I won't put in units to from alpha. If I have to change units, O from alpha is great uh, to use as a unit converter. Uh, that's the kind of tedious task that I don't mind the people using a automated tool to do. So diameter is that. So the radius will be half of that, 3.12 divided by 2. And I already have the formula. So let's use that to calculate the volume. I have 4 thirds times pi times radius cubed. Uh, so 15.90. So I got 15. I got 15.90. Let me make a mistake and see what it does. Um, so the most common mistake I think a student will make is uh, just not putting any units, which is a mistake. The other mistake is to just put in a default unit, meter cubed, which is also wrong. Let me see if ChatGPT spots that. Yeah, with a unit. <laughs> yeah, so it should be. Uh, I mean, it's not. Giving, oh, 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 it's uh, fifteen point nine cubic centimeters. Or sometimes the ChatGPT doesn't do math correctly. Yeah, yeah. So. I'm pretty sure, did I type? Um, 
let me just try putting these numbers into a different calculator. I mean, you know, it shouldn't matter, but um, so, you know, this is actually one of the things to watch out for with a generative AI because it's a large language model. It's not a, a computational, so it's not optimized to working out numbers. Sometimes it will give you all the correct steps, but wrong numerical value. Like for a computer, it's a, yeah, yeah, it's a, um, it's kind of weird <laughs> um, rounding error. <laughs> Ignore it. Sometimes, you know, you can get bogged down correcting ChatGPT on that. Um, so, um, so, so I'm just going to use this to calculate density. Uh, so uh, I have the density is mass divided by volume. So I have mass, uh, which is 41.61 grams divided by uh, 15.9 or cubic centimeter. Does that sound right? I mean, you can probably just do the calculation and not go through these tedious steps. Yeah, ignore that because it's, it's calculation error. Um, so I'm gonna do 41.61 grams divided by uh, the cubic centimeters and I'll put in the numbers into the system. I'm almost there, so I can just put the numbers in. 2.61. Now, I do recommend that you keep a minimum of three significant figures. And, you know, four significant figures is fine. Uh, we, our, in our first lab, we'll talk about the significant figures and uh, person error and all that stuff. Uh, now, you can fill out this uh, partially and submit. That's fine. That'll tell you if you are correct on that part. And the blank part, it won't grade um, so that you can work through a question part by part. So um, so you can say, I got 2.617 gram per cubic centimeter, which was graded as correct. Uh, but I have no idea how to do the plus minus part. Can you help me? Uh, let's see which way ChatGPT goes. Um, there are a couple different ways to do it. Um, you have relative uncertainty in mass, okay. Relative uncertainty in volume. Um, yeah, yeah, there, there's a calculus reason for that. Uh, ask me, I'll explain it in person. Or in my other solution, I actually I guess to explain the calculus reason for that. Um, so it's got both of these. And it's just adding that, huh? So this is technically incorrect, but it might give you a close enough answer to um, get graded as correct. So, um, so that's the person error. And I'm just assuming that these numbers are correct. They might be, might not be. So let me just try putting it in and see if that's right. Now, if you did this, um, you might not remember in the future how to do the error calculation yourself and, oh, it's wrong. <laughs> um, it says uh, it's uh, wrong. Um, let me see if it'll correct itself. And while it's doing that, let me think through it. So it looks like it's a, a relative error is dominated by the volume error. Is that right? Yeah, I guess that's right. Uh, the mass error is like uh, uh, one part in uh, 10,000 or, you know, 5,000. The, the diameter error is one part, uh, like a little less than 1%. So that should be basically the dominant error. Um, so three times, that's about 3% error. Um, that seems close enough. It might just be that... Uh, it's uh wait what did it do? um find the uncertainty in volume um three times it, is that right that doesn't look like it um zero point zero one divided one point five six times a three oh I guess that is right. 
<laughs> don't trust my mental math when it involves that many digits. Um, so that times the value. Uh, maybe it's affected by the, um, the, it, the error it had before. So it should be 15.90. So that's a close enough, 0.304. Yeah, and this is actually the correct formula. So what it gave you before above, simply adding the uncertainties like this, it will um, it may lead to overestimate. Although in this case it shouldn't have mattered all that much, because um, because um, it's dominated by a single parameter anyway. Um, I think it had a calculation mistake maybe here, that's uh, or here. I think that's the calculation mistake it had. So anyways. <laughs> so, so this is correct so far. This is correct formula. So all of that should work out. So that's hopefully correct. Um, so, yeah, good. All right. Uh, yeah, that works. Thank you. Doesn't hurt to be nice. So that's, a, um, that's the kind of way that I would recommend uh, when you are using ChatGPT or any generative AI. Uh, make sure that you uh, give it sufficient amount of prompts so that it doesn't give you the answer right away because uh, you really need to be thinking your way through the problem for you to understand what it is you are doing. And if we are using generative AI in working through this class, what I would say is think of it like a very smart friend. Um, you know, think of it like a tutor. Anything that you wouldn't ask a tutor or anything that a, a normal good tutor would say no to, you shouldn't get a yes from generative AI either because um, just because it, the generative AI will do it doesn't mean it actually helps you. It might hurt you. So let me pick out a few couple more questions and work through them. Um, this is a fun question and that is a way to do it. I guess it doesn't um, ever do the way that I would say is uh, actually simpler, which is you just uh, chug your way through, you know, calculate the minimum possible density, maximum possible density, and that gives you the uncertainty. But it's fine. This is the proper way to do it, um, even though it didn't really explain what it was doing. Um, I mean, it didn't explain where this comes from. So, no. anyways, so let me see. I think that's fine. Um, yeah. 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 Do I want to test? Let me test uh, if it gets a correct answer right away or how well it remembers my request not to give me an answer right away. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, 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 that's okay. I, I got the question. Uh, I'll just move on to another question. I'm just testing it. Uh. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think this is relatively an easy question, so let me try another one. Um, Oh yeah, let's uh, try this. This is a kind of a technical question from chapter two. And I can imagine people who need to review coordinate. I do have lecture videos, please watch them. Um, uh, and if, after watching the lecture videos, if you're still confused, then um, uh, let's say imagine that you need a review of um, Polar and Cartesian coordinates. Uh, so I think I need a review of a Polar and Cartesian coordinates. Because it's been a while since I've done geometry, maybe. And it says, okay, sure, let's go over. And it's giving me this, Polar. You give a radius and angle. Yeah, that's radius and angle. R is the distance from origin to the point. Theta is angle from the positive x-axis. Okay. Uh, Cartesian coordinates represented by that. Okay. Conversion formulas. Okay. I guess that's the correct formula. <laughs> uh, and if you want the explanation for the formulas, then you should ask. Uh, I, I won't do that right now because I want to do one more question after this. 
So now it's going through the rest of the example. Now here I basically asked it, you know, how do I do this question from scratch? So to doing that, and um, you should take time to uh, to read and make sure that you're understanding the formulas and how it's uh, plugging it in. So it's got these. Okay, let's do those in our online calculator. Um, so 2.2 times cosine of 2 pi divided by 3. And I think Wolfram Alpha understands implicit multiplication. Uh, yeah, uh, so minus 1.1 there. I'm just going to remember it and get the other answer. 2.2 times the sine of that, uh, 1.905 oh, minus 1. Point, yeah. Minus 1.1, 1 1.905. .1, minus 1.1, 1 1.905. 1 um, so let's first see if that's right. Good. It should be right. I got the right answer, but I have a difficulty visualizing the um, setup. Can you show this to me on the X uh, core? Ordinate access. I wonder how it'll do. Uh, ChatGPT does try to generate some graphs. It hasn't done a good job of it in the past. Like I've done uh, sessions where I've asked it to draw free body diagrams. Yeah, okay. Because <laughs> it's using Dali to generate these, uh, which is more of an artistic program than anything. Um, so <laughs> don't ask it to draw graphs. It'll be hit or miss. Um, like, yeah, this is what an art student who doesn't understand the coordinate axis might draw. Like, this means nothing. So, you know, if you want um, kind of coordinate representation of stuff, um, You'll need to do it yourself, or ask our embedded tutor, or ask me, uh, or watch the video. I'm pretty sure when I did this uh, question, I uh, drew the axis and all that. Because uh, that's the one thing that um, ChatGPT doesn't do quite well, which is drawing uh, figures of the type that we draw in physics. So uh, 2 pi divided by 3, that's less than pi. You know, this entire thing is pi. So 2 pi divided by 3, that's probably somewhere around here. It's also, I think, uh, 120 degrees. So this should be um, 2 pi divided by 3 or 120 degrees. And pick a point. Let's say this length is 2.2. Then that point, it should be um, a point on our xy coordinate plane, uh, which then makes a sense that this is minus 1.1 as we had in the answer, and that this is positive 1.905. So, um, yeah, drawing figures, um, having a correct technical visual representation of stuff, uh, that's the one thing that you can't use generative AI for yet. But, you know, I suspect um, either somebody will have released something that's uh, optimized for mathematics and physics and will be doing this well, uh, probably using some sort of code generation, um, or uh, uh, it'll get better, good enough to actually do it. Uh, if they're using DAL DALI, I'm sure it won't ever work because DALI is a more of an artistic image generation program. So, so that's this question, uh, and uh, one where you know uh, was play acting, uh, someone who's completely lost. So, you know, because of the way I asked the question, ChatGPT basically gave the whole answer in one shot. And you do have to um, uh, make sure that you are reading through it. Because, you know, you will get, uh, get, get into situations like that where uh, in a question you might be completely lost. And in that case, like asking a question like this, it's not improper. Uh, when I was, you know, tutor for Student Learning Se Center many years ago at UC Berkeley, uh, we've had uh, situations like that where someone comes in, they need uh, basically everything reviewed. Then, you know, we would take time to review everything. <laughs> and, um, um, the limitation here is that ChatGPT will sometimes do the everything in just one response. And you have to make sure that you take the time to read through it, understand it, don't just copy the formulas from the end.
because again that won't help you learn so let's pick one more question maybe one that's more substantive and uh, do that so this can be a good question uh, but I have a feeling if I ask it to draw a figure it won't do well uh, this probably isn't all that hard. I mean, you know, 32 and 12. Oops, the other way. 12 and 32. So, wait, is that right? Yeah, I think that's right. Um, so, I think it's a, a contest between question 8 and question 10. Uh, I've done both. I've done every question. Um, let me try question 10. Um, I want it to give me step-by-step -step, uh, explanation. Let's see if it does that. Uh, question 10 is actually fairly difficult uh, because you have to imagine it in three-dimensional space. Now, if it comes down to applicational formula, that's actually easy. You use the uh, cosine to basically figure out the angle. But um, let's see. I have this question. And then... Uh, hopefully it won't just give me the answer right away. Uh, is it going to give me the answer right away? Okay, it's giving you the formula and then have you do that. And you know, you could do that. That's uh, really the key thing. Um, but let me ask, um, let's see, uh, I've uh, seen the formula in the professor's lecture video, but I don't understand where they come from. Can you explain? I'm curious how it'll explain. Uh, yeah, yeah. You need to review that product. And uh, so this is uh, one of the, I think in the video where I do this, I explain, oh, we kind of skip that product for now and that'll affect you. <laughs> um, that's one of the reasons I did this question. So we'll uh, do a dot product review properly in the context of the class when we uh, get to the work ener energy. That's where we have to use that product for physics. That's when I'll, we'll review it and we'll actually use it. So uh, we have this uh, physics definition of that product, which is the uh, that product between two vectors is the product of their magnitudes times the cosine of the angle between them. And the neat thing about this definition is you can actually use it to use this to define angles in a context where it's unfamiliar, where maybe it's more difficult to visualize the angle. Like three-dimensional space, it's hard to visualize. And if you have any higher dimensional space, then it's actually impossible to visualize with uh, your normal three-dimensional imagination. And uh, and this uh, kind of definition of angle is what you would use in more abstract situations. So, so this is the explanation for that, where the cosine theta comes from. And once you have that, then it's a matter of applying it. You have the uh, the vector and the other vector, the unit vector, i, j, or just i, i, and you t um, work through that. Um, yeah, unit vector like that one uh, simplifies to that. So you solve this for the angle, then you get that formula that you are using. And same thing if you are using j hat or k hat. Um, so. Yeah, the last part isn't necessary, but that's fine. Um, so yeah, so with this formula, then you should uh, be able to plug in the numbers and, <laughs> and do it. So let's do that on all from alpha. Let's see. So um, I'll just do everything in one shot. So. The x component over the, oh, I need the, oh, that's why it was giving me the magnitude of d. Um, so magnitude of d, as it was giving me before, is um, square root of um, the components squared. And just add them up. That's the magnitude. I'll be using that. So the, the component divided by the magnitude. 
So 4 divided by that, that should be cosine of the angle. So I do arc cosine of that. That should give me the angle. Now, if you put this in, it'll say it's wrong because that's in radians. You want the answer in degrees. If you type enter in from alpha, it'll usually give you a couple choices. It'll give you yeah the answer in radians and also give you some common conversions. So 49.05 should be the right angle in degrees. And uh, let me do that for... Now, when you do the Y component, you have to be careful with the sign. If you forget the sign, you will get your wrong answer. So that minus the sign matters. Because um, I'll get an obtuse angle, which should be because the, the vector is far enough uh, at a large enough angle away from the Y axis to be have negative Y coordinates. So 137.5. And lastly, uh, 1. Um, plus one, but it assumes plus. You don't put it in. Uh, oh, oh, that feels large. Is that right? I, that feels wrong, but this is the correct interpretation of my input. Um, So that must be correct, but it feels uh, off. I mean, all right, my intuition just must be off. Um, I mean, what if I put in zero? Because I felt like uh... oh, oh, right, right. Okay, okay, large. I was thinking of sign. Um, so when it's a larger number, then it's going to be closer to 1. So if it's like basically a maximum value, it could be then, um, then yeah, that would be 0 degrees. And then um, it um, it goes to minimum. Yeah, OK, good, good. I just had a misalignment. Because <laughs> I, I was looking at cosine, and I was thinking uh, as if it was sign. Yeah, OK, that makes sense. So. Good. Yeah, so that's the answer. Now, uh, if you need the help of visualizing it, uh, I'm pretty sure um, uh, ChatGPT can help you. So let me do this. Uh, I got theta x equals 49.0 degrees, theta y is equal to 137.5 degrees, and theta g is equal to 80.5 centigrees, and they were read the correct. Uh, but I have a difficulty um, visualizing the vector. Uh, can you draw me a picture? And I'm pretty sure it'll try and fail. Probably. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's going to try and fail. Because um, the it's yeah it's using Dali to generate it and Dali doesn't know math it knows art um, yeah this is like nonsense um, all right um, or maybe uh, uh, can you generate the image with the uh, a plot generation program Natal Natali Sometimes, even with that, it doesn't do the correct thing, but and it's, yeah, if it's analyzing, then it's generating a code. So it's trying to do that with a, like a matplotlib in, um, in, I guess, is that uh, scientific Python? Um, so we'll see if uh, that works out any better. This might be correct. Is it, does it move? Okay, oh, uh, interactive chart not yet supported. But uh, let's uh, see. Um, it's possible that it's correct. So x axis, four, I can imagine that being four. Y axis, okay, it's um, the positive end is going that way. So minus 4.5, okay. Um, and z axis, one. 
But yeah, I, I think it's uh, wrong. Uh, which color is me meant to be the vector? Yeah, there, there's nothing that has a g-coordinate value of 1. Like none of these. Yeah, so again, the visualization is where ChatGPT one work quite as well. And, you know, it's kind of a... It is a um, significant shortcoming because when you are trying to get a good understanding of physics, having a good visual mental image is an important part. And what I will say is that you have homework helper videos. Well, you will see me draw figures for most the problems, even when I don't need to. And, um, and you can always ask me because it, it's the one thing that you can ask the large language model to help you with, at least not yet. I'm hoping as AI gets better, it actually does that and it's a really good tutor. So, so I think that's enough uh, of the demo and that's uh, I think uh, everything I want you to do at this session. Again, when you are, uh, so um, ethical use of generative AI in this class is allowed as, um, uh, as you've seen. And uh, just uh, as a reminder of the, uh, the, the class in the syllabus, what you um, should be making sure that you do when you are using AI tools ethically. It's one, cite your source, and now you are, if you're doing that for problem sets, uh, don't worry about it. Um, unless, uh, I guess, uh, if you are doing that for the problem set assessment, then, you know, properly disclose it uh, when you are attaching your work. Just don't copy from what ChatGPT did. Um, <laughs> if uh, any portion of it is coming from ChatGPT, you know, say that, you know, I used this prompt, got this response, and this is how I understand it. That's all good. Cite it properly. Review and understand the material. And uh, that's uh, really what you have to uh, have the discipline to make sure that you do for yourself. And finally, be responsible yourself for any mistakes. Like, you know, when you see something like this or something like this, don't copy and paste that because as you're reviewing it, you should have realized that these are nonsense. So don't use it.